Festival. Well, welcome, friends. Thank you for pictures. For those of you who uh, have not been here before, my name is Reverend Ruth Gallen. I'm the pastor here at Long Meadow Congregational Church, United Church of Christ here in Auburn. And this is the first of what I hope will be two outdoor services we will have in this season. The plan is also to have one on Christmas Eve at 5 o'clock, a little bit later because we don't know what people's work schedules are. And so we will also have one here at 5 o'clock, uh, which will also be, I'd say candlelight, but glow sticks because we can't keep, a, I can't keep a little flame lit in this kind of weather. Um, we ask, of course, that, and I thank you all for abiding by our request that everyone wear masks and uh, to continue to keep social distance so that we can continue to do this in a safe manner. And so I welcome you all for joining us here this day. And we feel blessed to be able to gather together. And before we begin, I'd like to go over a few announcements. First of all, I would like to thank our Boy Scouts, Luke Melendi and Jimmy Butts, who failed and are tending the fire this evening. Um, and we're really grateful for your service because there's no way I could tend a fire and do this at the same time. And I'm not even sure I could light a fire and swear there. So. And also thanks to the leaders, Jim and Will, for, for being here as well. Um, and also to Stacy, who uh, went through the process to obtain the fire permit so that we'd be able to gather here. Um, as I said, it's imperative that we all commit to following safety precautions of keeping your face mask on the entire time and maintaining at least six feet uh, from people who do not reside in the same household or with whom you do not have a regular contact. It fills me with great joy to be here with you this evening, for we gather together this evening as siblings, beloved children of God, who have seen both the darkness and the glorious light that, of this life that we share. We gather together to acknowledge both the darkness and the light, and to walk with each other and with our Savior, Jesus Christ, who came to be with us in all that this life presents to us. We pray that you will find comfort and companionship this evening and I would like to offer just a few words of explanation before we begin. Each of you have been given a glow stick as you arrive, and we will be using these during the service as we believe that candle flames would not stay lit in the room. During the service, we will be remembering, acknowledging, and honoring the different losses that we have all experienced in this extraordinary year, and you are invited to activate your light at any point and to hold it aloft. I'm assuming you all know how to activate a glow stick. You just, you just bend it until you hear it uh, sort of crackle and it will begin to illuminate. Um, together we will hold the light and together we will be the light for each other and our world in this time. And so now let us gather together in God's ever-present love and light from the prophet Isaiah. The God who speaks comforts to, comforts to us calls us here. The God who addresses us with tenderness meets us here. The God who guides us with gentleness cares for us here. We come to prepare a way for the Lord. We come to ready ourselves for the transformation of our lives. For the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it. Are you all able to hear me with this? Okay. I thought that the shield would be better than a mask. Throughout Advent, my friends, we proclaim hope, peace, joy, and love in the midst of our difficulties. This is the church's gift to the world, that our faith story is grounded in the presence of God that came and dwelt among us in the midst of our hardship. But as the daylight grows shorter and the darkness of night lasts longer in this season, we acknowledge that in the midst of the joy of Christmas, we are also acutely mindful of those whom we have lost. And it is important to name that sometimes hope 
peace, joy, and love are distant feelings when we have encountered so much loss. The anticipation of renewed grief as Christmas Eve, approach, as Christmas Eve approaches can be difficult to bear for many, and so we gather this day to provide a space to help us move through these feelings and to funnel our heartbreak in ways that, while not alleviating it totally, gives space for tangible remembering. Will you join with me in a spirit of prayer? On this day, as the nights grow longer, we gather, loving God, mindful of the losses that have multiplied throughout this year. As we look back at it all at once, we are in danger of being overwhelmed by its tragedies. Sickness, violence, fire, hurricane, earthquake, and more. Our aim this day is to acknowledge this, to mourn this, and to know that in all this, there is the possibility of more life. If we are able to be overwhelmed, let it be that we are overwhelmed with the assurance that we are not alone. We are able to do this because the longest night is the birth canal for the ever more light as the days will soon be lengthening and we begin the wait for the springtime of new life. As we illuminate our lights, help us to remember that although each of our lights is small, the light is still there. And together with your loving embrace, we will break the darkness. When we feel as if our light is dimmed, we can rely on your holy light to continue to shine until we ourselves shine bright once more. We are not alone. Amen. Now hear from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 to 2, 4 to 7, and 18 to 21. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west, I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing, for now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. And the wild animals will honor me and the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people and people whom I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. This is the word of the Lord. My friends, as I move through this litany, whenever you feel moved, if any of these words speak to losses that you have had, I invite you to illuminate your light simply by bending it until you hear and feel a snap inside. And it will begin to illuminate. If you shake it, it makes it brighter. You may hold it aloft or close to your heart, whichever brings you the most comfort. Let us pray. We mourn this day the loss of life. For so many, the pandemic has taken loved ones. We mourn the loss of those close to us and whose names we do not know. We mourn those who perished while working to save others' lives. We mourn those who died not of pandemic, but of other causes. 
and we mourn the loss in many cases of our ability to be with them as they pass. Our loss of gathering together for comfort in the ways we needed so much. We mourn this loss of life. We honor and remember these beloved ones. We pray for comfort and peace. We pray for comfort and peace. On this night, we also mourn the loss of livelihoods. For so many, the pandemic has taken the security of food, shelter, care for families, and medical care. We mourn the loss of businesses that could not withstand the circumstances. These were not just businesses, but dreams born of passion and hard work. We mourn those who find themselves needing to rely on others for help when what they really want to do is to be able to help others. We mourn this loss of livelihood. We honor and remember the dreams magic heard. We pray for sustenance and resilience. We pray for sustenance and resilience. We mourn this night the loss of love. Our society's dilemma Centuries in the making has created such hatred and anger, suffering, oppression, and ill will. We mourn the loss of those whose lives were lost to brutality and violence. We mourn the loss of our ability to love one another despite our differences. As beings who deserve to be seen for their inherent beauty and worth, we mourn that the peoples who we mourn the peoples who have perished and suffered at the, at the greatest proportion in the pandemic of this coronavirus. We mourn the pandemic of racism that still plagues the fabric of our communities. We mourn this loss of love. We honor and remember the work of prophets who proclaim justice, and we pray for compassion and change. We pray for compassion and change. On this night, we also mourn the loss of liveliness. For so many, this year has robbed us of our energy, our enthusiasm, and our sense of well-being. We mourn teachers and leaders and caregivers and workers who are struggling to help those in their care, themselves exhausted and needing the sustenance they give to others. We mourn the loss of all who are suffering with anxiety and depression, who are finding it difficult to live each day with fullness or to find hope for tomorrow. We mourn those we have lost to suicide. We mourn those who find themselves addicted to substances in order to ease the pain that feels unbearable. We mourn those who are experiencing their place of shelter as an abusive place from which they struggle to escape. We mourn the loss of the markers of milestones, graduations and proms, weddings and anniversaries, those moments that mark points of transition. But we also mourn the everyday things that give us joy and make our lives full of meaning and purpose. Learning in school with our friends, going to work with colleagues we admire, going on vacation, having dinner or even coffee with a friend, the small everyday losses that lead us to feeling isolated and alone. We mourn this loss of liveliness. We honor and remember that each person is precious and whole. We pray for recovery, reunion, and renewed vigor. Amen. Now we illuminate the last of our lights, just as we will do later this month on Christmas Eve. We light this as a sign of our belief. We believe in the light that has come and is coming. These lights cast their glow on all the surrounding prayers we have prayed. This light resides within us, perhaps dim for a time, but always lit, an ember of the holy inside us. This light reminds us that we are not alone. My friends, for many years I worked, excuse me, 
many years ago, I worked as a chaplain at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston as part of my preparation to become a pastor. Although I had some previous training in the medical field and had indeed worked as in a rehabilitation hospital for a number of years, in this time as a chaplain, I learned a great deal not only about my call and purpose in that setting, but also absorbed a lot of medical information as well. Information about bones and tissues and organs, x-rays, CAT scans, MRIs, EKGs, EEGs, each told a story about the parts of the body, much of which I honestly never knew existed. I finished that training in awe of our modern science and what doctors were able to determine by looking inside the human body. However, even when shown the true miracles of modern medicine, I also realized that we could never actually see inside of a person as through God's eyes. God sees beyond the flesh and knows our thoughts, our feelings, our motives, our fears, and our hopes. The one who created us knows us completely and loves us completely. God knows where and how we are hurting. As Isaiah tells us, God says, because you are precious in my sight and honored, I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for you. Do not fear, for I am with you. This darkness, excuse me, this dark season of Advent always presents us with many challenges, and this year we have felt those losses all the more keenly. Some of these challenges include fear, loneliness, isolation, or thoughts that remind us of past losses and difficulties. Advent can also magnify <coughs> these experiences. The traditional lively songs may awaken grief in our hearts. Sounds and smells may bring back memories of special times that also awaken feelings of loss and loneliness. Our greatest comfort during these difficult times may be in knowing that God sees beyond the external trappings and enters into our pain with us. God has not promised us that we will live a life without pain and grief. God promised us that we will not be there alone. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Jesus' last words to us on earth were, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. This is the essence of the gospel, my friends, even though it is sometimes frightening to discover that God knows all about us, our thoughts, our emotions, our conflicted natures. This is the good news. God is always at work in us in every season, even in these hard seasons. Indeed, God has not abandoned us to the darkness. Rather, God has come near to us in Christ, Emmanuel, which literally means God with us. Although we may be most aware of the fear and the loneliness inside us now more than ever before, we do not forget that God lives with us too. We are never truly alone. Thanks be to God. Up <laughs> Will you join with me in prayer, my friends? Gracious and generous God, we look to you for compassion and thank you for your presence this night. Overwhelmed by our burdens, we easily forget that you never leave us alone and that your steadfast love for us never falters. By coming together, we find assurance and comfort that we do not suffer this longest night alone. You have given us strength to live through this night. Turn us to reach out to those whose night is also long. Grant that we may be your light and healing presence in their lives by bringing them your compassion and comfort. 
that will assure them that they do not suffer alone. All this we pray and join together in the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day, day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, my friends, this Christmas I wish for you light to crumble up the darkness. This Christmas I wish for you love to pull us closer to one another. This Christmas I wish you peace, the same as the angels sang. This Christmas I wish you starlight to follow on your way home. This Christmas I wish you promise to keep hope alive in you. This Christmas I wish, you, wish for you God newly born in the flesh. This Christmas I wish for you all Jesus Christ born this night, light of the world. I thank you, my friends, for joining me this night and pray that God's light and love may shine in your hearts in the days ahead. We hope that you will join us when we gather here again on Christmas Eve. The Longmeadow Congregational Church, UCC currently worships on Sundays at 9.30 using Zoom and a pre-recorded version of the service is also available on YouTube. You can please contact me by the phone number at the church if you would like to receive any of the links to this service. I thank you all for joining me here this day, and I pray that you will find blessing and comfort in this time of gathering. Go to peace. Thank you. 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 Thank you.